over here. This is the final day of 2021. If I really have a low is not just for, I want to actually do this video a little differently. I'm not just going to do a low for my year. I'm just going to do a low for my whole year. Because there is actually one video. Because, well, not video, but one thing about this year that, oh, actually technically a bunch of things about this year that were bad. But I could actually collectively put them all together. As many people would. And that is straight up. Looking back at it, there were things I probably would have done a little bit differently in, that, in the year. Maybe I could have, looking back, I could have done this instead of this. Really, because really, let's be real here. This year, already better than 2020. No one's going to dispute that. But again, some things were still a little bit on the restrict, restricted side for us. Not to mention, you know, again, you know, we still are living in a time of, of a pandemic. But things have gotten better. For sure. And for that, I will be forever grateful. My high is... Gosh. Well, actually, I can continue with my low for a little bit. I mean, yeah, a couple of times, you know, we, my parents and I have argued. But, you know, what parent has not argued with their kids and vice versa? You know... Maybe timing of certain things would could have been different, but there really is no changing that now, because for better or worse, twenty twenty one is over. But with that said, I can definitely get into my high for this whole year, and it's the fact that there was. An overwhelmingly amount of good this year for me. I mean, all of the major holidays that I really could celebrate, I was able to celebrate much more effectively than in 2020. So already there's that. I undoubtedly had the best summer I think I've had in years. Definitely since I started making videos. I mean, and the fact that I only had the most awesome week I had with my mom's side of the family up at Cuco Lake further validated that and solidified that. I got to celebrate my third nephew being born on August 23rd. You're up in the gloves, you by the way. Speaking of birthdays, I got to celebrate, you know, birthdays from all members of my family, be they, you know, my brother, my nephews, my grandfather, which, another thing, I finally got to thank my grandfather for, and I told the story before, but I could quickly talk about it again. When I was very little, I actually had to go to the hospital one night because when I was taking a bath, I actually had a seizure. And the night I was at the, because it really wasn't anything bad. It, it was just a virus. It, the doctor's rule, it was just like, you know, a virus that was going around or something like that. But it just had an effect in the way of me getting a seizure while, you know, I was taking a bath. For the record, I barely have any memory of this. But I've been told this story a lot. The night I was at the hospital, it was my grandfather on my father's side the one whose birthday we celebrated earlier in March of this year. It was my grandfather on my father's side who stayed with me that entire night. And it was, it was only up until this year, I didn't thank him for that, but I did. So, and I mean, full disclosure, as far as I know, my grandfather's fine. You know, a little old and slow, but for the most part, he's still fine. But on the very off chance that I'm wrong and perhaps maybe he doesn't that kick the bucket soon, I got to tell him thank you for what he did. So there's that. So he definitely got that closure for me. 
Um, when I picked up my aunt from uh, the airport, the one who came in from Colorado, and you know, I spent like the afternoon with her. We had a fantastic heart to heart, which is great. I'm really glad I got to talk to her for that, for some of the stuff that, because I sort of did come clean about what my late grandfather, the one on her and my mom's side, told me before, shortly before he died, and how it was, you know, disappointed in me, and how I didn't really, I didn't really have as much, I didn't find it as overwhelmingly emotional as everyone else did, is why. But I did get, but I did come clean about that. So, that's really good. Really, the vast majority of the great stuff that happened this year really involved family. I mean, just this last couple of weeks alone, you know, we just celebrated Christmas. I got to see family that actually lives down in Virginia, whom I haven't seen in months, like since July even. So it's been a while. And we had a wonderful afternoon. It was great. It was a fantastic way to celebrate Christmas. And you know, all the countless times I got to see my nephews this year. Which, um, hi boys, your uncle Nick loves you. I'm a very off chance you're watching this. Um, you know, I got to do all sorts of fun, neat stuff. I mean, yeah, a lot of the good stuff that happened this year really was as simple as just me hanging out with my mom and dad, but Honestly, and yeah, I talked about how we've gotten into arguments before, but again, what parent and kid haven't argued with each other? You know, that's just what families do. And yeah, it kind of sucks if they argue because sometimes you wonder, you know, is it as bad as what we're really arguing about or... What if something worse happens down the line to further exacerbate the situation that's already happened? We don't really know. But I can definitely look to the fact that, you know, I do have family. And my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my sister-in-law, the daughter, and she's my sister, and her family as well. My three beautiful nephews. And all the other living relatives I had left. I'm thankful I have that. Which actually goes into um, quite possibly the best thing I did in 2021. And arguably, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do in 2021. And probably my entire life for that matter. And it's still so surreal to even talk about it at all, but yeah. I already talked about it, so there's no going back, right? And that was the fact that while as of August of 2021, I have been officially diagnosed with depression and pragmatic communication disorder, for many, many, many years, it was believed that I was on the autism spectrum, specifically Asperger's. And I had mentioned several years in the past that I did contemplate suicide and, you know, it was only through the past, only through the, through the sad passing of the late, but forever will be great, Andrew Einstein, that I had seen my brothers from Trinity Pauling band together in a time of great depression. I told myself I wouldn't do that to them. So I didn't. And I still haven't and I never will. So thank you to all my brothers at Trinity Pauling. You know who you are. But being placed on the autism spectrum was the reason why I contemplated suicide. For the simple fact that, you know, so, because even now I'm, I'm 32 years old and there's still no cure. And again, back when I was a sophomore in high school, we'd seen the movie I Am Sam, and I'd seen how, you know, they were trying to take 
Sam's hit away from them because he, well, pretty obvious, the difference between the character of Sam in that movie and me are wildly different. In fact, honestly, I don't think anyone would have figured out that I was on the autism spectrum at all if, you know, upon first glance. But, by all accounts, it's all grouped together. It's cut from the same cloth. And if people, and if, you know, people are trying to take away, you know, you know, that guy's kid in that movie, who just said it won't happen to me? Now, again, I mentioned I do have a family, and I do. I have a support system. If anything like that would ever happen to me, you know, I have people who got my back. And I've got my mom, my dad, my brother, and again, all my other living relatives. And yeah, I have some friends who would help me too, for sure. Because I would help them. All they would simply need to do is ask, and I'd be able to do that. My point is, you know, now I know I have a support system. So if anything goes wrong, I'm good. I mean, frankly, I hope it never even comes to that at all. It shouldn't come to that. Especially when, again, I'm no longer considered to be on the autism spectrum. Again, I have depression, pragmatic communication disorder. Which, and yeah, I probably came across as bad when I said this last time, but it's still true. I honestly would rather be sad and I would, I'd rather be sad than being on the autism spectrum. Pretty sure if I was on the autism spectrum, I'd be sad at this point, considering everything that's happened and how, you know, I was in special education and how I was just among the worst people ever. But again, that's all in the past. And this year I finally came clean. And I, when I say I came clean about this, I have to be very serious here. I very much was going to take that to my grave. Like, really. I was going to make sure no one knew that I was in special ed, not on the autism spectrum. And it probably just begs the question. And this is where I'm probably going to get some ire for this. Let's say that by the grace of God, I had to meet the right woman for me. And you know, we do want to get married, we do want to start a family. She would eventually know about this. That again, this is before before the before I was properly diagnosed as, you know, being depressed and having private communication disorder. Because let's say that I never was, and I was still technically on the autism spectrum. And I actually do find the right woman and we do want to start a family. There is a possibility that, you know, it's genetic. The question asks, well, I really have never told my wife. And should be told? No. I wouldn't have said anything to her about it. Partly because if she really, oh, a little bit because if she loved me as much as I hope she did, she would have already figured it out. But more importantly, I'm operating under the assumption that, you know, all, and keep in mind, yeah, this may sound a little bit sexist, I apologize. All women to some degree think about their future and having children. And they want to pick out the best possible man to have children with. Well, unfortunately, being autistic really doesn't make for a great man. But, well, I shouldn't say that, because looking throughout history, there are people who now are considered to be autistic. You know, Albert Einstein for sure is one, but no one knew that at the time. No one knew to diagnose it. In fact, back 100, 150 years ago, if there was anything wrong with you, you either would have been, you know, hidden never to see the light of day ever again, or sadly met with a rather unfortunate accident. Oh, it was very grim back in those days, I'm, I assure you. In fact, even now, I still, I still sort of constantly fear that. Like, no, we're never going to get something like for lack of a better analogy, a straight up holocaust of, you know, autistic people. 
But I was always worried something like that would happen one day. I mean, again, you find someone charismatic enough and a good enough speaker to become like a great leader, they'd find a way to make that happen. And that always terrified me. But again, I'd probably be long dead before anything like that ever happened. It probably never will even. It probably never even will. So there you go. And yeah, I am so, that is another part of my low too, because there were so many years of depression and contemplations of suicide and believing that my brother was the favorite child and everything in between. All those wasted years, it was for nothing. So, I forever have to live with that. I forever have to live with the fact that I contemplated suicide. No, I didn't do it. But I could have. It very well could have been me. But I didn't. I'm here now. And I can assure you, I'm not going anywhere. Not unless, I mean, unless, so I was gonna say something really stupid, like if the Grim Reaper shows up, but like I'm looking around, see, see, see if he's anywhere or whatever. No, 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 I'm cool. We're cool. We're cool. Okay. Although, consider I mentioned this the other day, and how of the three postgraduates who made the varsity top seven cross country team at Trinity Pauling, I'm the only one who's still alive. You know, I wanna. Does anyone have an invisibility cloak that you're willing to let me borrow? Shout out to all the Harry. Shout out to all the Harry. Shout out to all the Harry Potter fans out there. You all know who you are. And speaking of fans of shows and stuff, you know, I saw a lot of really great shows this year. And I talked about a lot of great shows too. I mean, I saw the true finale of Adventure Time. I saw the very end. I saw the beginning and ending of Centaur World. Which made S tier. Didn't think that was going to happen, but it did. I mean, I had hopes, but still, still surprised even me. Kid Cosmic is going really well. We're nearing the very end of Amphibia. You know, I saw a lot of great shows like America's Got Talent, a couple seasons of The Masked Singer, and some internet shows like Hot Ones. You know, I saw a lot of really great stuff this year. And. No one can take any of that away from me. And yeah, my love for going to see straight up movies on the big screen kind of died with the pandemic, but you know, it's fine. I'm better off using my time for other things as well, like spending it with family and such. And that's important. Plus to be perfectly honest, I'm trying to, I'm in the process of trying to, you know, save up money and stuff. And um, even if you just get popcorn and a soda, it's mad expensive at the movie theater. Seriously, I gotta, full disclosure, I go to a store and like sneak candy in if I want candy. You know, that's what you gotta do. It's the only way you're gonna get candy in there without having to pay like, seriously, like, it's like a small thing of candy, like yay big. And it's like $6. What? That, that. Well, I mean, that's how movie theaters make their money. But still, man, you'd probably still make a lot more money if you... You could have that and it would still be expensive, actually. Who am I kidding? You know, it's it's unbelievable. But that's what movies do. I'm not going to... I mean, you got to appreciate whatever hustle's there, I guess, right? Ah. <laughs> uh. Not to mention, I think if there was anything great that happened this year, even greater, uh, we are, oh, yeah, I said the best thing earlier was when I came clean about, you know, my past and why I contemplated suicide because, again, yeah, the whole special ed and 
being confused, being autistic, being for many years thing. Like, admitting that was the best thing I did this year. But even better than that, after admitting that, after that, after having the best summer quite possibly I've had in years, definitely since I've made videos. Honestly, and this is something I've noticed every year. Every year for my birthday, so many people, you know, thank and wish me a happy birthday. I don't really thank me. Oh, actually, technically, one friend sort of said thank you for being on the same rock as me. So, yes, there's that. But the point is, so many people actually took the time to wish me a happy birthday. In fact, some people are still doing that even yesterday. And Wednesday, well, Wednesday and yesterday, too. And it just goes to show that I'm actually a lot more loved than I ever thought I would be. And, yeah. Sometimes I never really take the time to appreciate that, or sadly sometimes I even forget. But, if I'm ever reminded even a little bit, and understand, if I do something, if I do so, if someone does something for me, of course I take the time to thank and thank and thank them and tell them how much I, and try and tell them how much I appreciate what they did. But I did that for like 300 plus people over this last week. 300 plus people. They personally wished me a happy birthday. They didn't have to. But I did. But not only did I thank them for wishing me a happy birthday, I returned the favor and I wished them a happy new year. So yeah, you know, you do something kind for me, I'll do something kind for you. Sorry. Uh, started getting kind of emotional right there, huh? Thirty-two years old, and I'm doing this. Yeah, I may not have the white gal by my side, and yeah, one really could see me as. You know, a loser that most people really shouldn't even pay even remote attention to. But I'm still who I am. I'm still the same person who, for the last four years, has been making videos straight, with even some extras on the side with art thoughts and you know, other stuff. And the best part is, there's still so much more to talk about. There's still so much more to do. In fact, full disclosure, by the time I'm done with this video, I'm probably gonna be like, oh, I forgot to talk about this, or I forgot to mention that, or, or, or I didn't say this thing the way I wanted to. But you know what? I honestly couldn't. I don't think I'd be able to do that even if I wrote it all down. Which would be a bad idea, actually, to write things down and then talk about them. Because full disclosure, the last four years, pretty much all up here, from any kind of memory I have or whatever. So yeah, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. But I can always think about that later. I gotta think I'm a pretty pretty special guy to have so many family members and friends and supporters who love and appreciate me just like I do them. There are not enough words in the English language, nor can I make enough videos in my lifetime to express how much that really means to me. And having done this for four years, I can only imagine how much better it could get. 
oh, I said could, how much better it will get. Because I get the feeling that the pandemic really will be getting a lot better soon. Even better than it is, even better than it is now comparatively. You know, I'm looking forward to watching my nephews grow up as the years go by. I mean, you know, right now they're only, one of them's just not even half of, not even half a year. One that's just like, you're gonna be five months old in January. Meanwhile, you have my twin nephews are only two. No, it's not much, but that's okay because they're young and I get to see them grow, adapt, evolve. And it's something just so beautiful. And yeah, maybe someday I'll have that. I mean, I do want that. But, I mean, I'm just saying, ladies, I am available. You know, for, um, and I just said I'm not going anywhere, so, uh, and that's actually one thing that, that always did kind of bother me. Why is it that the man has to do the asking on stuff? I mean, how do you know the man, because I will be honest, just like Matthew Perry, who played Chandler on Friends, I'm incredibly shy around women. I am. Especially if they are very beautiful, and trust me, I've seen a lot of very beautiful women who I am friends with. So yes, I have been friend zoned. <laughs> but honestly, having that connection is definitely a lot worth more, is worth a lot more than having nothing. So I can definitely count my blessings there. Is there anything else I can say or, or talk about? Well, I guess if there's a, you know what? I do have a couple takeaways for this year. And yeah, there are, a couple of them are similar to last year, but they still hold true now. The first is that as long as you have family at your side, whether they're near or far, then you know there is someone out there who loves you and will always support you. Another thing I've learned is being kind and courteous to others, you know, that really does go a long way. I mean, think, you know, think for example, what I mentioned earlier that like, you know, 300 plus people took the time to wish me happy birthday. Yeah, one person doing that is already fantastic. But that many? You just make it that much more exponentially great. I can't even describe just what that one little act of kindness can do for a person. That's why I take the time to wish people a happy birthday on Facebook even if I don't really know them that well. Because, you know, it's their day. They should enjoy it and they should know that at least someone even if it is for a couple seconds, is thinking about them. Because that can be a lot more than most. And also, you can do so many things in life that can change you and describe you and just make you a completely different person on the outside. You can be told so many things that are just cruel and wrong and make you want to cry. And believe me, yeah, I am kind of going back to what was it like back in high school thing with, you know, the special ed thing. But you know what? It can't change who you are. Because no person, no place, no thing can ever take away who you are as an individual. Gosh. Sometimes I do a great job of making myself cry. Ah, boy. So, 
It's about 20 of 7 in the morning right now. Meaning we have 17 hours and 20 minutes until the end of 2021 at this time. I don't really have many plans for myself, but I do know part of those plans involves being with arguably two of the most important people in my entire life, my mother and my father. And I can't wait for that. So from me to you, from the very bottom of my heart, I am forever humble that I've been doing this for four years and I'm never going to stop and I'll always continue to do that. And I hope I always continue to make you smile for it. I am very hopeful that with whatever's left of 2021, you take the time to enjoy it how you want to do it, if you can, and just have fun. I mean, tomorrow is a Saturday. You can sleep in, right? And always remember, no matter what time of year it is, no matter what the year is, or even with the time of day, or even minute, or whatever. If you want to talk, you better believe I'll listen. And if you're in trouble, just like my brothers did for me many years ago, I will forever have your back. So, as long as this is New Year's Eve, take care. Happy New Year. And... Yeah, I know, I say this every day, but considering it is New Year's Eve, I better say here, make good choices. Happy New Year, everyone.